Okay. Well, let me jump into the 1003. Um, these are my shots, so they're probably not as interesting. But talk a little bit, excuse me, notes here. Talk a little bit about the 1003. So as I'm sure most everybody knows 1003, Sulai Mikado uh, lives out in Hartford at the, <coughs> excuse me, at the Auto Museum. Uh, it's been there quite a few years. Um, my dad was actually part of the crew and I've been working with the 1003 group also. So uh, just thought I'd talk a little bit about it. The 1003 was actually built in March of 1913 by Elko. And it was one of 48 mics on the Sioux. Uh, the mics on the Sioux were kind of like Jeeps. Uh, they kind of did everything and they were the workaday locomotives. Um, 1003 at the time cost $26,000, um, which probably is still a bargain today. Uh, 63 inch drivers. And like I say, it was kind of a workaday engine, just did everything that was needed. Um, here's a picture from 1934 in Minneapolis. Uh, 1941, the engine actually received a Stoker feed water heater, um, steel cab and pilot. Uh, then in the 1950s, they got a new tender from uh, the 4002. Uh, the engine was retired in uh, December 1954. Uh, and then that's when it actually headed to, uh, to Superior. Uh, this picture here in surface, I'm not sure of the location. It was a Robert Graham photo uh, from 1947. Here's a shot taken at Shorm. Uh, the engine had just been painted and it's uh, about to head up to uh, Superior to be on display. Another shot of the engine. This is, uh, uh, looks like May of 83. So there were various groups over the years that tried to get the engine back going. You can kind of see the jacketings off here and looks like they're trying to do some work to it. Uh, in 1994, the engine was actually uh, sold to the Wisconsin Railway Preservation Trust with the goal of rebuilding the engine. Uh, and they actually were able to get it operational by 1996. Um, first time I actually saw the 1003, this is in Two Harbors in 1997, uh, running uh, from Duluth to Two Harbors on the museum line there. So the engine spent some time up here in, in uh, Duluth and then it uh, actually went down to uh, Altoona uh, where it's stable made was the Sioux 2719. Uh, this is in August of 1998 in Osceola. Uh, this was actually a Steve Kleszynski and Dave Goodhart photo charter. Uh, the two engines were there along with uh, Northern Pacific 328, I believe, uh, for a weekend of um, uh, celebrations. And I, I don't quite remember what the whole thing was, but I know there's three engines and there are all kinds of steam all over the place uh, at the time. So didn't have the best of weather that day, but uh, we tried to make the best of it. Uh, it was kind of neat to see two Sioux line engines uh, running around actually on Sioux line trackage at the time. Uh, in, uh, let's see, 2001, or I'm sorry, in 1999, the engine was actually sold to 1003 Operations LLP. Uh, the previous group had run into some issues, so uh, a new organization was formed that actually bought the engine and uh, was able to keep it operational. Uh, here's a picture of Waukesha. This is uh, in, <clears throat> excuse me, August 01 uh, for uh, chocolate days at Burlington. So again, running on uh, home rails. In July of 02, the uh, engine actually had the honor of pulling the circus train from Hartford to uh, Milwaukee. Uh, here it is just outside of Horicon. Uh, so it was quite an honor for the engine. It was a, a pretty neat event. This is in uh, November of 2010. This is over at Edgerton. Uh, this was a Polar Express. Um, and actually they had the author of the Polar Express uh, Chris Van Ellisberg, he actually rode in on the train and then uh, went into the depot and signed books. Uh, this was actually the first time he had actually been on a steam locomotive. July of 2019, uh, this is just outside of Slinger. The engine was involved in the 150th anniversary of Slinger. 
Uh, so the train left Hork, uh, Hartford, headed over to Slinger, and before they went into town, they had a giant birthday cake loaded onto the flat car and brought it into town. So it's, it's quite a neat event. A lot of people there. They had the museum open, uh, horse ride, uh, carriage rides for people. It was a, it was a neat event. They, uh, they really did it quite well. This is in 2004. Uh, so in 2001, the engine had moved to Hartford, where it is currently located in the Wisconsin Auto Museum. And this is actually kind of the, the first photo charter on the Wisconsin Southern. Uh, this is, was run by the late uh, Dave Goodhart. Uh, this is in Beaver Dam, and again, in November of 2004. Same trip, this is just outside of Brandon. This is in uh, Waupon. This is actually in 2007. Uh, so Waupon was always a, a favorite spot. Uh, it was an area where we couldn't back up easily because I think there's about a dozen grade crossings here. Uh, so we really didn't want to flag all those crossings to do photo run by. So what we would do is have the engine set out of town. We would go into town, set up, and then have the engine blast through at track speed. So it was it was always pretty neat. They come blowing through there at, uh, I think the speed at the time was 40, 45, and just basically tied the whistle cord down to hit all the crossings. So it's quite, quite a neat experience. This is uh, back in Fairwater in 2010. Uh, family uh, that actually lived just down the block was kind enough to pose for us and uh, uh, wave to the engine as it went by. Again, in Fairwater, there's a Stellmachers. Um, this time we were actually to get a couple older cars to uh, pose for us. Uh, so you're doing a little run by uh, right here in Fairwater. And this was uh, 2007. 2010, again, Fairwater. Uh, this is at the Fairwater Feed and Supply. Uh, real friendly people, they're always very helpful to us. They'd go and get their tractors and pose them for us and clean up the grounds if they knew we were coming. So uh, it's Quite an experience that the photo charters became more than photo charters in the area that people would look forward to, uh, you know, in these small towns, the engine coming through and being able to see the locomotive. So it's, it turned out to be uh, very, uh, very fun events, very educational, which, which is some of the goal of the 1003 group is to educate the public on steam locomotives and railroad history. Uh, most of the photo charters are done in the Northern Division of Wisconsin Southern. Uh, but once in a while we do uh, uh, wander off. This is over at Lima Center when the wigwag was still there. Uh, this is actually in 2008. So the train was heading over to uh, Janesville and I think eventually to Madison for uh, some kind of celebration. This is in 2015 in Burnett. Uh, sometimes you get lucky. We were just outside of town doing a photo run by and this gentleman just happened to drive by. And we kind of ran after him and asked him, hey, do you mind posing with us? And he was glad to. Uh, actually, one of the pictures from this trip with his car ended up on the cover of a uh, antique uh, car magazine. So This is just uh, south of Wapan at, Wapan at Red Cedar Road. Another uh, nice spot that we liked with the curve and was kind of quiet here. So we set up here. That's uh, Chris Pitson. Some of you may know his brother, Tim. Uh, set up with his engineering uh, in a little track mobile there. This is in uh, 2015 again. Um, this was a charter we did uh, out of Hartford up to um, Fairwa Fairwater and back. Uh, this is at Rubicon. Uh, the weather was horrible for the first day of the trip, uh, although I, I think we got some nice shots, but it was just it was cold, it was rainy, it was, it was miserable. Um, again, this is in Rubicon, Ron Burkhardt, I think you're on the line. Ron actually lined up to have this car and the folks here, I, I believe Ron, one of the people is your wife. Um, so we did a couple photo charters and uh, we were grateful to them because like I say, the, the weather was miserable and uh, uh, they, they stuck it out for us. Another favorite spot is this is over towards uh, Fox Lake and the Causeway. Um, this is uh, another favorite spot. The people again here 
real nice. They let us on our on their property, and they kind of get a kick out of watching all the people running around taking pictures. So uh, it turns into quite a nice event. Uh, this is actually towards Beaver Dam. This is the duck pond. Uh, so this is the engine in 2016 doing a couple runbys. Again, another another nice spot that we uh, we always like to hit up. Also tried a couple night shots. This is uh, in Fairwater in 2007. Uh, again in Fairwater in 2010. The, uh, the tractors are actually owned by a WSOR employee uh, who was actually our pilot. So he arranged to have their, his family's tractors. Um, I think they're Alice and, well, I'm not sure. I, I don't, I'll screw up the name, but uh, actually his whole family owns all three of those tractors and he was able to get them on a, a flat car and uh, we used them in the photo charter. One of the other jobs besides photo charters that the 1003 does and uh, actually has been doing since 2006 uh, is Santa trains. Uh, so this is in 2019 uh, coming into Horicon, uh, I'm sorry, into uh, Hartford um, after picking up Santa Claus and bringing him into town. These events are pretty popular and actually in uh, 2019 was the, the biggest event that they had uh, as far as people. Um, the whole town shows up, they have a parade. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite a nice event. Uh, usually in non-pandemic years, uh, people are allowed into the uh, caboose where they meet Santa and get to talk to him and get a couple little gifts and get to see the engine. So it's, it's a nice event. Like I said, they've been doing this in Hartford since 2006. Uh, the only years that they missed was uh, uh, 2011 and 2012, and that's when the engine was uh, uh, being rebuilt for its 15 year annual. Like I say 2020, as everybody knows, is a little different. Um, so we couldn't have people come in and sit on Santa's lap. Uh, so we were able to have Santa sit in the bay window and families would come up to him and talk to him. And uh, it, it still turned out wasn't quite as nice as the normal, but uh, people seem to enjoy it, especially they get out of the house a little bit. Uh, and then um, something they had a little different uh, because they couldn't directly see Santa and talk to him in person, uh, except through a window, they had a little uh, letter box um, that they could send letters to Santa. Uh, knowing the US Postal Service, I don't know if Santa's got those letters yet. 2018, uh, this is Thanksgiving weekend, another Santa event, but this time it was up to Plymouth. This was actually the second time that the 1003 had been up there. Uh, I think Mike, you may have remember, I think you were there for a lot of this. It was, it was a great event. Uh, the whole town really turned out. Uh, it was a lot more people than they thought. So they spent the, the afternoon in a park in Plymouth and then that evening back to Elkhart Lake uh, where they actually delivered Christmas trees to uh, people. Uh, so like I say, it was a nice event. They had run out of food even before the 1003 had arrived because there's so many people. It was just, it was just a, basically a wall of people. After that, the engine headed back to uh, Plymouth to participate in the Christmas parade. Uh, so this is the engine sitting on the on the bridge in town and uh, the parade going by. Again, it was. Uh, Pretty neat event. It was very well attended and people really had a good time. Uh, and that brings us to 2017. So what started out with a, an email and a couple of phone calls and uh, a lot of work on a lot of people. Um, I mentioned a couple of Tim Pitson, uh, Rob Conway, of course, Norm Carlson was involved, Dave Oppenheim uh, and a whole host of other people uh, talked with Metro about bringing the engine down to uh, Chicago. Uh, the actual original plan was to bring the engine down for railroad days in Franklin Park, uh, and then to actually go to the Shriners uh, Hospital, which is along the West Line. Um, 
unfortunately, railroad days fell through, uh, but then Metric came back and said, hey, we're, we're having family days. Why don't we do it then? So that's exactly what we did. So this is the train uh, 1003 coming into uh, Fox Lake. Uh, we're waiting for the Metro train to clear and then we'll follow it in. One of the things that was insisted upon uh, is that we clear the rush hour. So this is early afternoon and we're gonna follow this train in uh, to Western Avenue. Uh, this is up around Lake Forest, Amtrak train uh, coming by. Uh, this is us arriving into Western Avenue and we did beat the rush, which was good. So the engine sitting in the yard. We did bring some extra cars. You'll notice some uh, gray hoppers. Those were brought along for uh, braking purposes. And the engine getting ready for the today's event, getting ready to take a bath. This was the event, this Rich Young, he's fireman on the engine. Uh, we were able to bring some stairways with so that people could actually look right into the engine and uh, into the cab and see what was going on. Uh, it was very well received, it was a great event. Um, they had a lot of people there and it was, it was pretty neat. Um, then at one o'clock, uh, the 1003 backed out and we headed to um, the Shriners Hospital, which is um, a little hard to see, but it's over on the right behind the engine. Uh, Shriners Hospital, Chicago, uh, if, if you're not familiar with it. Uh, it's for children, sick children, um, they go there to get treatment and uh, uh, hopefully find a cure. Uh, the families don't pay anything. Um, so it was a, it was a kind of a eye opening experience uh, when uh, uh, Bert Maul and myself went over there to actually see the hospital and talk to them and propose the idea of, hey, bringing 1003 by and, uh, you know, how could we do that uh, so that the children could enjoy it. And um, so these, what we did is some of the children weren't able to leave the hospital. Um, but what we did is when we backed down the main line, I called uh, people over in the Shriners and they were able to get the children up into the windows and kind of at least see the engine. And we sat there and we blew the whistle for quite a while. Um, so it, it was kind of nice. And then we came into here. Um, we were able to raise some money for the, uh, for the hospital. So it was kind of a pretty neat event. People taking a little tour of the cabooses. And then we went back to Western Avenue, uh, put the train back together and uh, waited for our Sunday departure. This is up at Roundout, um, the engine coming in, a Fox Lake train clearing the, uh, clearing the branch line. Uh, this is Jeff Barney who worked at Roundout. Uh, Rob Conway was able to convince him to come in and uh, hoop up some orders to the 1003. And I think that's it. Well, let's give it up for Mike Rea, everybody. Uh, that was that was great, Mike. Thank you. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully, I didn't bore you too much. No, I I don't think so. If you would just on uh, a unshare your screen for a second, there, Mike, and uh, stop share. Okay. Excellent. All right, uh, open the floor to any questions that anybody might have for, for Mike. Uh, this is Ed Kohler. I don't have a question for Mike, but uh, after seeing uh, the magnificent photography that Mike supplied us with, I'm almost embarrassed to be presenting next month. Appreciate the compliment, but uh, um, I mean, Dad did quite a bit of photography over the years and uh, um, trying to kind of follow in his footsteps a little bit. You certainly have with uh, the shots of the 1003. They were just, the artistic quality was, was actually there was more artistic quality in those than there were in your father's images, I would say. Yeah, I appreciate it. Hey, Mike, when did your father start with the Sioux then? Uh, he started in 65. Okay. He worked, yeah, he, he actually worked for the Burlington for two weeks uh, as a clerk. Um, they asked him, or they were, they're hired for clerks. He went to Clyde and uh, he didn't know how to type. And he told them, you know, hey, I don't know how to type. Is that going to be a problem? I said, no, no, it won't be a problem. Well, it, pretty much clerk, all they were doing was typing at that time. So 
didn't work out. So he went over and uh, uh, became a carman over at uh, at the Sioux line. Yeah, it's funny because my wife actually lived right next to that yard. So she was watching some of the pictures that you had up, especially of the bicentennial parade, because she was probably there when that was going on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Actually, the original beanery at Schiller Park is still there. It's a restaurant called The Great Escape. If you're ever in the area, they have uh, excellent food. Yeah, my uh, we were there for my uh, mother-in-law's 70th birthday party. So okay. The first, first family function that I was with them on over there. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a neat restaurant. A lot of pictures uh, hanging on the wall. I actually all from my dad's collection. Uh, that uh, cemetery scene, that was a 1947 DeSoto limousine, and the woman in red was my wife. Okay, that's what I thought. It's been a while, but I, I, was, I thought that was, and I think we had it. I had that car for a couple different charters, Ron. Yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah. People like your dad and Fran Wiener are what made the Sioux line a fun railroad to chase for the longest time. And then into the WC it was always a friendly place. Always a lot of nice people. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, it was a friendly railroad. And like that, like you said, that went right into the WC. A lot of the Sioux guys uh, did go over to the WC uh, or, or should say stayed over in the WC. Um, but yeah, it was, it's always a, a fun railroad to chase. Uh, like I say, people were friendly. They, help you with information and uh, uh, so I know my dad enjoyed working there for all those years. It was neat too that you were able to ride on the with the Milwaukee uh, FM too because I got to do that I got to grow up with that myself so that was a lot of fun with the Milwaukee guys. Yeah yeah it was a neat trip it guy was waving us and like well, what does he want from us <laughs> he's like come on let's go we're going so we all ran over and jumped on it was pretty neat. <clears throat> Wouldn't happen today, unfortunately. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing more. Yeah, hopefully uh, this year we'll be able to, hopefully the 1003 will get out again. Mike, I just want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. uh, how many pictures did you say your dad had? 200,000 200, images? Yeah, there's probably, well, that's just negatives. I'm guessing. Um, I've tried looking and counting and becomes mind boggling and I stop. So uh, he's got quite a collection. I mean, he collected for years. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Charlie Felstead, um, but my dad has Charlie's collection. Charlie was one of the premier steam shooters of the day, roster shots. Um, portraits really, uh, you know, rods down, low light, that was what Charlie wanted. Um, but he has a lot of Paul Stringham's collection. Uh, I might be familiar with Paul's work. He had a lot of stuff published in Trains Magazine, lived in Peoria. Um, Bill Christensen uh, from Northwestern. So it's quite an extensive collection. Um, wow. Every time I go in there and, you know, find things and just kind of blow you away. That's amazing. So, um, so Mike, I um, got a private message here from Gary Odenhoven, who's uh, with us uh, tonight. He wants to show you uh, his shower curtain. Gary, uh, do, you, do you have that uh, you can show us all? How does that look? Don't see it. You got to see it. There we go. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty cool. The story with this is my son and myself, Father Tim, uh, we were down in Chicago for a weekend and we wanted to get there when they came down to Chicago. So we waited for this thing and it finally came. Tim snapped the pitch and we had so much fun. And I got this for Christmas. It's in my downstairs basement bathroom. You sit on the Royal throne, you turn the light inside <laughs> the bathtub shower unit and you got this train coming at you. So it's kind of unique. So when yeah, you guys pretty visit cool. my new train, 
layout, which is going to be based on the Sioux line. I must, I belong to the Sioux line historical. So okay. this will, this will be, if you go to use the bathroom, this is what you're going to see. <laughs> That's pretty neat. Yeah, thanks, Gary. Uh, I guess I'm kind of curious as to what happens when you have people over who are not necessarily Sioux line fans. How do they react to that? I just got the, the bathtub working here. My son used it a week and a half ago. I'm just getting the flooring in. And if you look, I didn't show you in the picture. I'm Tonight I was working, there's gonna be a urinal in the bathroom too, in that same bathroom behind the door. And that's gonna have some really fun. So when a guy uses a urinal, get ready for a surprise. I think Ron Burkhardt knows what I'm doing. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> <laughs> anything else? Uh, anybody have anything else for, for, for Mike? Well, hey, Yuhu, thanks oh. for asking that question, by the way. Yeah, right. Uh, anytime, Terry. Good to see you here tonight. And thanks for dressing up. Um, uh, Mike. Yeah, uh, hey, Bob. Did your uh, dad do his own darkroom work? Uh, he did, yeah. For uh, It's actually kind of funny. When, um, uh, when I was growing up, we actually had a, a two-bedroom apartment in Chicago. Uh, so one bedroom was my brother and myself. And the actually the other bedroom was my dad's dark room. And my parents slept on a, a, a sofa couch that pulled out into <laughs> okay. a bed. Um, so yeah, he's he did dark room work. Uh, I got rid of it uh, maybe five years before he passed. Um, actually gave it to a University of um, Southern Illinois and they actually still use it today. Uh, but by that time, it got into the digital. Uh, my dad did a lot of selling of prints, um, but um, you know, it, as we go here, the the market for the print business kind of dried up. So, yeah. um, good. Thank you. Sure. So, um, anybody else with uh, comments or questions for for Mr. Rea? I am reminded, Mike, you're probably going to kill me for saying this, but um, I'm rem reminded of an episode of uh, I Love Lucy, uh, where um, they were having a seance and um, and they they brought in a medium and, uh, you know, to, to speak with the, the, the dearly departed relatives of whomever or whatever. And that person's name was Rhea. Oh, and, yeah. And, and um, I'm sure I've told you this. And um, and at the conclusion of the, the seance, I just remember uh, Fred Mertz saying, well done, Medium Rhea. And I'll say that to you too, uh, Mike. Uh, well done, Mike Rhea. Excellent presentation tonight. Um, fantastic photography, uh, well presented. As um, many folks have mentioned, the scans are excellent, sharp as a tack, um, so that you, you have something to be very proud of uh, coming from that legacy. A, a, a beautiful presentation and I, I thank you so much for presenting tonight. I, I appreciate it, Mike. I appreciate the kind words. Anytime you want to see something else, just give me a yell. We will have you back uh, without a doubt. Judging by all these compliments that uh, that showed up here in the chat, uh, that there's dozens of them. Um, and as you saw, we had a uh, high of 90 some odd people in the room tonight, uh, which is our high watermark. And uh, clearly your reputation precedes you and, um, and, and you didn't let any of us down. So thank you again, Mike. Let I me- I appreciate uh, it, thanks, thanks for coming before out. We, uh, before we just uh, go into the, um, the general afterglow of the situation here, I'll just mention here that uh, coming up on Tuesday, the 16th of February is our online slideshow. And you can read about that um, at the chapter's website which, um, which is um, www.nrhswis.org. Our presenters are Steve Miazga, Dan Munson, Dean Savola, Jerry Pfeiffer, and Mike Juhas, whoever that is. And then following that uh, in March, a month from tonight, uh, Ed Kohler will be uh, giving us a presentation on the rail lines of Otto Mears. Uh, uh, Ed was in the house tonight and um, so, uh, you know, we, we have something, something really cool to look forward to there. Uh, a little bit out of our typical wheelhouse, but something I think is going to be uh, exciting for you all as well. My, so, um, yeah, just one sec, Ed, uh, I will get to you. I will also mention here, for those of you 
who are not members of the Wisconsin chapter of the NRHS. It's oh so simple to join. Just go to our website, www.nrhswis.org, click on the join link. And, and by PayPal, it's almost immediate and painless. Thank you. Okay, Ed, next month, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, I just wanted to very quickly say that uh, Mike's photography just blew me away. And I'm almost embarrassed to follow, up, to follow him up, but I will try and do my best. And uh, I hope everyone uh, who's interested in sort of a offbeat Chicago narrow gauge, uh, excuse me, offbeat Ch Colorado narrow gauge story that also has a little connection to Maryland uh, will uh, find it in our heart to, to come see what what's going to be presented. It, it promises to be a great show and I am looking forward to it. So thank you. Thank you, Ed, for being here tonight. So with that, I'm going to turn off the recording. <laughs>